Hey guys, I'm Beth, this is Read Remark, and today we're going to do a February reading wrap-up. Hi guys, I'm Beth. Thank you so much for joining. I know I say this every month, but February was another good month full of books. So let's get right to it. The first book I read is called Bad Blood by John Carey Rue. This is a nonfiction book that follows the rise and fall of the company Theranos. Particularly, it follows the founder Elizabeth Holmes, the young phenom who founded Theranos, which is a medical technology company. Had its flagship product worked, it would have been this palm-sized device, a, a small thing that, with just a drop of blood, can read more than 200 different medical diagnoses. Had it worked, it would have been revolutionary. And that's what a lot of the investors were really banking on, was being able to help revolutionize the healthcare system. But it was a big fat fraud. <laughs> It was a fraud. She faked test results. She had huge turnover at her company because as soon as someone would start questioning her, she would just say, you fired and get them out of there. Just all sorts of bad things going on there that were just completely wrong, just bad. And so of course they lost all the money. The product never came to fruition and Elizabeth Holmes is now facing possible jail time. Now I watched an interview that John Kerry Rue did with Jim Cramer of Mad Money in which Jim Cramer was thinking the same thing that I was, that Elizabeth Holmes was just straight up evil. <laughs> she was just a bad player. John Kerry Rue has a different, um, a different viewpoint on it though. He thinks that she has noble cause corruption what that is, is when people go into it thinking that the ends justify the means. Along the way, she lost sight of being good, keeping humanity in mind. She thought that just the end product would justify everything. It didn't. It doesn't. Something interesting that the author does here is that he doesn't even insert himself into the story until, I'd say, three-fourths of the way through. Very interestingly laid out almost unemotionally. You don't think about the toll that this has taken on people's health. You think more about just the facts of what brought her there. So it could have used a little more of that human element, but then again, it wasn't really going to tug at our heartstrings. It was going to just layer upon layer build this case of what she did, how Theranos got to where it did, and where we are now. So highly recommend it. Good book. The next book I read this month was called The Water Cure by Sophie McIntosh and my oh my what an odd odd book this was. It follows three sisters named Grace, Leah, and Skye. <sighs> How much of this book can I talk about without giving it away? It's just strange. It reminds me a lot of a Sofia Coppola movie, specifically The Beguiled, but still takes it a step further. So. The mother and father are so concerned about the world around them that they say that the men contaminate everything. The only way that the women can stave off this dirtiness, this uncleanness, this corruption that the men introduce into their lives is to go through these elaborate rituals that are really harmful to them, such as being sewn up into a sack until they faint. They call them different types of cures, the love cure, the water cure, the fainting cure. Now, when you look at it, you're thinking, these are just elaborate ways for the parents, these insane parents, to abuse their children. But there's still that little thought in my head. Is there supposed to be something real going on? Is the world indeed corrupt? Men are really set up in this book to be predators. Women are set up in this book to be victims. It's a very interesting gender dynamic that we get here, and it's a very interesting question that Sophie McIntosh introduces into our minds of what is real, what is imagined, who are real predators, who are not, what is real victimhood, and what is imagined victimhood. It's just interesting. It's interesting. Through most of this book, I didn't quite know what to make of it. <laughs> in fact, the first part of it, I was like, what the hell am I into? <laughs> but it was so, it, it was really interesting. I think I've said that about a thousand times now, but I ended up really liking the book, especially near the end. I believe Sophie McIntosh also has a past as um, a poet. This book has a lot of lyricism and it flows beautifully. The words are like water over your eyes. It's just beautiful. The 
next book is called I Owe You One and it's by Sophie Kinsella. This is contemporary fiction about a woman named Fixie who helps run her family's general store. Now I've noticed that Sophie Kinsella books seem to include a few common themes including a horrible boyfriend, check, at least one horrible family member, check, and oftentimes it includes also a handsome stranger. It works. I like her books. I think they're fun to read. They do give me a certain amount of stress. Sometimes it's good stress. Sometimes it's just stressful stress. This was one that kind of veered into the stressful stress part, but it ended up being really good, really heartwarming. Good book, good author. I always like to read her books. She's one of those instant read authors for me, whether it's for a palate cleanser or something more. I just enjoy her books so much. Hey guys, I'm cutting in with a different location, different day, different everything because I got home and realized that one of the shots in which I'm talking about this next book was completely blurry, so good times there. <laughs> so another book that I read during February was Tell the Machine Good Night by Katie Williams. This was a really interesting book. I would say it's maybe science fiction. It centers around a woman named Pearl. Pearl works for a company that has this high-tech box that basically it'll take the person's DNA and be able to return results that say what the person should do to improve their lives. So maybe sit closer to a window or take up playing the violin as a hobby or something like that. They seem like completely random recommendations, but then the people take them and lo and behold, figure out that their lives are a little bit better by following these recommendations. It's kind of a novel concept, technology being able to tell us exactly what we need to do to make our lives better. Another interesting thing about this book, Tell the Machine Goodnight, is that it shows a lot of personification of inanimate objects. I've noticed that I do this myself, like if I ask Alexa or Siri for, for a question and she answers, then sometimes I'll be like, thanks Alexa, or thank you Siri, or I'll get really mad when she returns with completely inane results and start cursing at her. <laughs> so we see this happen in the book as well with Pearl, where it's like the last thing she wants to say goodnight to at the end of the day, first thing she wants to say good morning to at the beginning of the day, she has all these. Um, imaginary conversations with it and builds this whole relationship which is never returned. It's a machine. It's never going to love her back. But you really see her misplace a lot of these emotions onto this piece of technology. It's kind of interesting to think about as we move on in like AI or stuff like that. Machines being able to learn more and more what if we start getting into, um, getting into human behavior with them learning that? Will we start to react to them as humans or will we react to them as machines? Just interesting thing to think about. Now, one drawback to this book is that it's kind of all over the place. We see Pearl's story jump in like all these different places without necessarily going anywhere. Um, in my opinion, it's kind of nice to see the changes or non-changes in her life over the years and those of her son as well. But ultimately, I feel like it kind of goes nowhere and is just kind of playing ring around the rosy with this technology. So I feel like maybe it could have used a little bit more structure, but still a really interesting read. I've heard it compared to like a Black Mirror episode. Highly recommend the show Black Mirror. I don't know that I would necessarily take it to that extreme because Black Mirror gets really, really dark and shows us the absolute worst in um, the intersection between humanity and technology. I don't think that this necessarily takes us to the worst ends of that. Um, I would say it's more just an interesting speculative look at what life could be like maybe 20, 30 years from now as far as technology goes. Also worth noting this month are my booktube book reviews that I put out there. One was An Unwanted Guest by Sherry LaPena. This is a classic locked room mystery, kind of in the style of Agatha Christie, in which people go to this cabin for a nice relaxing weekend and then one by one start getting picked off by a murderer. <laughs> 
One of my um, better liked of her books, I was a little bit frustrated with her second book, A Stranger in the House. This one I thought was a much better entry, so interesting book. Another book that I reviewed this month on BookTube was Mongrels by Stephen Graham Jones, and it was a book about werewolves. Oh. <laughs> Instead of being a horror book, I would say that it's more of a coming of age book about a boy and his family, and they happen to be werewolves. There are a lot of parallels to be made about their class and how they live kind of on the fringes of society. Very interesting book. I highly recommend it. You might also check out my discussion on the Dan Mallory saga. This is the author, also known as A.J. Finn, who wrote The Woman in the Window, a book which I highly reviewed. I enjoyed the book quite a bit, but then it turns out that he has this long history of lies. So it's kind of discussing that and some of the feelings that I have around that, some of the questions that it raises. So, very interesting month for books. Let's get you back to the regular programming. All right, so that's all I've got for this month. What did you read? Let me know. I want to know in the comments. Thank you, as always, for watching. Be sure to do all the great booktube stuff. Like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, and I will catch you next time. Thanks, as always. Bye. I say it every month, but February was another book full of good months. It was another month full of good books.